Welcome to part six of where we're going to focus on materials and look development. Materials and shaders can be created within the LOPS Solaris context. Uh, you're going to do this here using quick surface materials and then assign them using a material linker. Uh, you also add textures to the backdrop and set it up properly with UVs. So if we go into this network, let's go back up near the top and we're going to go tab quick surface material and this material is actually a material X material that's been saved as USD and we're bringing that back in and making edits to it giving it a new name so this makes it actually very efficient and perfect for what we're doing here and it's friendly with the Karma XBU render so we're going to do that then we're going to go alt click and drag create a second one and this one we're going to call drop mat okay and right now for the backdrop we're going to change its color to let's go green and go with a dark green okay so we're going to feed this into this and this into this and when we do that well nothing happens quite yet what we want to do is just before the camera, we can do it here. We're going to put a linker. There's a light linker or a material linker. We're going to put a material linker down. And when we do that, it takes the materials that we have and makes them available. And then all our geometry is over here. And this is where we can set them together. So we take the soccer ball, drag that over. Then we go to the geometry and we get the soccer ball geometry and we put that over here. Perfect. Now the backdrop should probably be in the geo as well. So one of the things is, let's go to that backdrop node there. And we're just going to go slash geo slash. And by doing that, well, when we go down to material linker, we'll see, yeah, the backdrop's in there as well. So we've assigned the material, uh, which basically just comes out as white right now, except for the patches. The color on the, on the geometry is actually pushing through, so that's fine. So now we're going to take the backdrop. We're going to drag that over, and we're going to bring off the backdrop geometry and assign it. And there we go. Got our green. And if we want to, we can go back to here, maybe go to this darken that a little bit. Maybe that make that a little bit darker. There we go. So now that we have that, one of the things we can do is open up this sort of snapshot thing and we can say, oh, let's take a snapshot of what we've done so far. And that will add that into there. Now let's take the soccer ball material node and under base color, we're going to click on this and say set or create. And it's a UV grid by default, but what we're going to do is we're going to don't click on that second one, click on the first one, and we're going to go dollar hip, texture, and get the color. And there we go. Now it turns out that our we're not getting our okay, so let's tab trans. Well, actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to use the select tool, we're going to select that. And let's go tab trans transform. And let's see if we can rotate around and find the yeah, we can rotate around and get the the texture. So we were sort of pointed the wrong way to see the, the nice little texture on there, but now we're good to go. So let's go back up to the material there. And what we want to do is add in other uh, texture maps, like for instance, roughness. We can say, well, let's get a roughness map. And let's go, and there's a roughness one. And there's actually a specular color map, so we can go and get uh, reflect. And then we can also, uh, and we, if we go all the way down to bump, we can get a normal map. 
say Setter Creek and get the normal map. And that adds a bit of thickness to there. And we're in the camera right now. Let's make sure we don't have the lock button on. Uh, if we want to get in and see that a little bit closer, we can zoom in and see that there. So that's what it looks like up close. And there we go. And if we want to go back to our camera, we can go back there. And, oh, if we wanted to, we can, let's go in here. And let's, what if we change that to 0.5? We get, yeah, we can start to see a little bit of bump in the, the logo a little bit that we have there. So we can go in there and say camera. Now we want to add some color to the backdrop. So let's change this back to uh, 111. So it's FF perfectly white. And then we're going to, just like we did before, we're going to go set or create and we're going to get the dollar hip textures and the backdrop color and sort of a weird thing there let's let's just go get the specular color so we're going to set or create that and we'll do backdrop reflect okay so that's not giving us exactly what we want and part of the reason is the UVs on the backdrop so let's go back to the backdrop here, dive in, and between the grid and the bend, we're going to add a tab UV project. And so if we were to look at it like this, okay, we can initialize, initialize the best plane, there we go. And generally the V range, we want to go negative one here, and that way we flip it around to go in the right direction. Now, once we've got that, we can go back to the stage level, and now we'll see that the texture is, oh, <laughs> it's flat. Why is that happening? Well, we forgot to set the display flag back to the end of the chain, so it was picking that up in the wrong place. But come back to the stage. Uh, let's click there so we don't see the handle. And let's just click an empty space there. Okay, we'll click over there and that gets us, uh, deselects that. Okay, so now that we have this rendering, let's create another snapshot. And you'll see that we now have a snapshot from before and one from now. Now let's go to a new pane tab, uh, the Solaris Render Gallery. And in here we can display the two images just by clicking on them. And we can also do something where we go and tag one as A and one as B to do some diffing. So we can compare them just with slices like this uh, and then there's various other methods you can use as well. But it allows us to compare different renderings and see which one we like best. And once we've chosen the one we like best, if we go back to the scene view, one of the things you can do is you can actually right click on this and say revert back. And it has remembered all of the parameters, nodes, everything, and literally the whole network's been changed and all the parameters on it. Notice all the texture maps aren't assigned, for instance, and the ball hasn't been rotated. But we can, of course, go back to the second snapshot and do the same thing. If we revert, now we get the transform node that we added at the end there, all the texture maps are back, and the scene has been reverted back. So this is a really cool feature of the snapshot gallery, which you can use. So next we're going to uh, rig the soccer ball so that you can animate it bouncing. Okay, see you there.